Hi, this is Anna Runkle, also known as the Crappy Childhood Fairy. And in my last video in this series on resilience, I talked about fear as an obstacle to healing and how with willingness, we can achieve freedom from the free-floating fears that do nothing but keep us stuck and scared. Now in this video, I wanna go up a layer to the next strength, and that's self-care. I used to think self-care was just hot baths and chocolate for people whose problems were so small that they would actually solve them with chocolate. But 25 years of continuous healing and strength building has taught me that while it's true that self-care by itself probably won't heal childhood PTSD, it makes healing more possible and it definitely makes it more sustainable. Now, how many times have you had some healing breakthrough from a book or a retreat or a new healing technique or a new boyfriend, and then within like three days, you're feeling more dysregulated and dysfunctional than ever? For me, so many times, because I made the mistake of thinking that the new thing du jour was going to be the whole fix for all time. Now, wouldn't that be nice if everything would just be okay forever, right? But that's not how healing works. Recovery from childhood PTSD doesn't happen because of one-time treatments. It happens because of multiple things that you use consistently over time. It's not a pill you take. It's more like a stack of pancakes. And here's what I mean. You probably know how important it is that you get adequate sleep, for example. And this would be true even if you'd never had any trauma at all. A lack of sleep not only wears us down physically, but degrades our cognition, weakens our ability to self-regulate emotionally, and amplifies virtually all the problems associated with early trauma, like depression, addiction, anxiety, and even heart disease and cancer. So if you get only a little sleep one night, and that's the only thing that's going wrong for you, you're probably gonna be fine. But if you had a day where you had no exercise and you ate a bunch of bread and ice cream and no protein and you watched five hours of TV and had four glasses of wine and had an argument with your partner and then you lost a couple hours of sleep, then the lack of sleep could be the last pancake on your stack. And that's the thing on top of everything else that pushes you over the edge into being a mess with yelling and dissociation and tears and then two full days of brain fog and the clumsiness that goes with that and all of that before you feel like yourself again. And it's hard to know what sets you off because whichever is the last pancake on the stack is different every time. The trigger is actually the full stack of pancakes and that's what you wanna pay attention to because health problems can be a huge obstacle to healing. You know that vigorous exercise is one of the most powerful healing strategies available for PTSD, but you can't do it when you feel terrible from bad food and bad sleep or when you're sick. And I know this better than you might think. It becomes a vicious circle because if you're trying to do your life day after day under the burden of a fairly large bunch of health stressors, which I'm calling pancakes, the dysregulation you're feeling is probably also happening at the level of your nervous system. And you can't feel that necessarily, but it's making you sick. The increased rates of disease from childhood PTSD is well known and it's measurable. And the more trauma you had as a kid, the higher the probability that you'll bump into serious health problems as an adult. Not just the problems you'd expect to be risks for traumatized people like depression, addiction, anxiety, and behavioral things, but diabetes, obesity, heart disease, autoimmune disease, cancer, chronic pain, migraines, strokes. And please don't internalize this as your inevitable fate. It's not your fate. Your risk is higher, but not everyone is affected, and what you can do to lower your risk right now is heal from childhood PTSD. And this means mastering re-regulation, changing the things in your life that are beating you down, and taking beautiful, imperfect, but substantial care of yourself. Now, I get this in comments a lot. People say, oh, it's so easy for you to heal because you have no idea how bad it is for me, what I go through. Well, to those people, I say, Yes, I know, and if you think I haven't been at the bottom of the totem pole and stuck in hospitals and broke and sick and sad and hopeless, you just haven't heard enough of my story. Every person is different, but where you see me today is not where I always was, and where you are now doesn't have to be where you always stay. I go into more detail about illness and the healing I experienced in the members area of Crappy Childhood Fairy. If you wanna watch a longer video where I teach more about how you can apply these lessons, click on the links below and learn how you can become a member and take my online courses and give yourself that gift of recovery for a year. There is something better for all of us. Childhood PTSD has obstacles, but we have strengths. And strengths consistently applied 
can't help but move you forward. You can't always control your progress, how fast it goes, what healing looks like, but trust me, you can move forward. And the place where you end up is gonna feel a whole lot better than where you started. Healing is not an island, it's a path. And the path is called vibrancy. So today, as you shift from one place on the path to another place, just a little further towards your healing, pause and notice that vibrancy is not a destination, but that good feeling you get as you take one positive action, just one action at a time, one minute at a time. Give yourself that. This is your healing superpower in action. <laughs>